We caught youth going across the street un, <laughs> unsupervised right here. So, hey, tonight, if you would, uh, I'm, I, I, if you would turn to the, probably the best, safest place I can tell you to turn to, uh, to for this for this uh, opportunity tonight would be Matthew chapter six, verse twenty-four. Uh, I'm going to weave around a little bit before we get there, but hopefully, I'm going to end up there. And I, I want you to think tonight, and, and this is going to be hard for some. Bernie, I'm thinking about you and Joe, you especially. I'm going to bait you a little bit with some questions. I don't want you to answer because it would be really easy for you to jump in. And I'm deliberately telling you I'm baiting you, not in an evil way, but I'm pulling you towards a question that I want to ask you, and I just don't want to trap you there. So I'm, what do they call that? I'm disclosing my intent prior to <laughs> But tonight, my thought lies in the past that I've heard some, I've heard, you hear people say this all the time, how, how far things seem to be off balance in America right now, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we also hear comments on how much things have changed, and, 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 and they're always changing, it seems like, and, and how morals have just seemingly, every day, it just seems like we drift that much further off, and I don't know why I'm so dramatic tonight, but I'm wound up, so you'll just have to deal with it, so anyway. How far, how far off base uh, is another comment we often mention, right? Missing the mark or being off mark. It's just our country seems out of out of sorts, right? It seems it just seems, to, in some respects, to grow darker and deeper all the time. And some of the things that we see and reminded of in the world and, and, and on uh, different uh, sources of media remind us of, of of how the world does seemingly continue to pull away from what. See, no matter how we state it, or I, and I, and because I, I believe most rational and moral-minded people, whether they claim Christianity or or, or a religion, I, I believe most, I believe just most good people could say, and I hear it from people, right? This this is messed up, right? What we're seeing right now is messed up, and and, and we want to discuss it. Well, I mean, last night we got into some discussion. We want to discuss it. We talked about it. You can, that's why I said I want to hold you back a little bit tonight, because I could say, "What's wrong with the world?" And I could light this room up, right? <laughs> I mean, in my opinion, right? Not enough time. There's not enough. I mean, every one of us have a thought. It, it doesn't take two seconds to start a conversation about what's wrong with this world. Uh, the, uh, the, the world at large is out of hand. Um, we wonder, how do, you know, and, and even uh, what was it? President Trump had that, you know, put Amer make, Mer make America great again. We you know we want to put America back on course. We want to we want it to be what it was. Um, uh, you know. Uh, and again, like I said before, everyone kind of blows into a barrage of opinions and suggestions. I, I'm going to tell you, I, I just, I'm, I'm leading you a little bit, so stay with me. Because first and factually, uh, can we accept the fact that, or can we, can we discuss the fact of who is off course? And who is off course in America today? Who is off course in our world today? Thank you. Us. Can we agree on that? See, we're the ones that got off course, amen. Because so, first the first part of correcting how we got off course is to agree to what? That we're off that course. We're wrong. That we got off course, right? <laughs> oh, I had tried there. I didn't see you pop in. I was like, where did Deborah come from? Anyway, that we're off. That's, that's the best part. And so, so we think uh, this is true because, again, please forgive me, but we think, man, I'm talking as, a, as, a, as, as an overall uh, uh, species, if you will, we think we're the center of the universe, right? Come on, don't we really? I mean, we really do, and we think because we're we're and right. and and see, and from that everything is off course. When in reality, we are the only thing that is off course. And I could almost say, like Mr. Ed, of course, of course, right? See, the reality is when we come back to the fact of the matter is, what's the matter with the world? What's we say? What's the matter with our life? What's the matter with America? Man's off course. Well, duh, Tim. Okay, stay with me. Stay with me. Therefore, when we consider how far off course our current course is, then we have to first acknowledge the baseline of what? The baseline of what God laid down for us in the first place. Because see, here's the beautiful part about it. What God laid down in the beginning, guess what? Never, ever, ever. And that's what? That's a really, really, really good thing to remember. Why? Because look how much we are off course from what he laid down in the baseline. Amen? And no matter what we do, no matter what we think, no matter what generation comes along, what, no matter what uh, a, a, a party is in power, what, what, what government we have, what, what we've tried uh, different, all across the world, communism, capitalism, democracy, no matter what man's tried, 
there's only one thing that has remained a solid truth. God himself. What God will Amen. Remain. And that's the baseline, thank God, that was not established by us. That's the beautiful part about it. I can always come back to one thing. No matter what my day is, I can come back to one thing. God is good. Amen. Am I good? No. No. Why are you laughing like that? For? I was laughing at myself. No, no, no. I saw you trying to drag me on the bus right there. Just, no, that's the fact of life. And you say, well, Tim, that's negative. No, it's very positive because then I know I can go to something that I know is factually and I know that it is good because guess what? He loves me regardless of what? what I do. See, it's unconditional love. It doesn't come with any rules like, well, you should, or you ought to, or maybe. No. It comes with absolutely no conditions other than he loves you. He loves you. See, this allows us to understand the comment of polar opposites, and that's what I was thinking about. You've heard that statement before. That we're, that's just absolutely a polar, we're a polar opposite of each other. And that's what I want you to think about tonight in, is God in the world. You say, well, these are obvious statements, Tim. Maybe, maybe not, but it's been my thought process. Hey, if you look at it, we are direct polar opposites of everything that's going on in this world today. And that's why I want to challenge you tonight to think about if you're going to stand up and you're going to be a Christian and you're going to believe in his word, then guess what? You're going to be in direct polar opposite of everything that's going on around us. Amen. Stay with me. That's why I want to ask you to consider the baseline. The baseline is God himself. How do I know what's true in America today? So much data, so much. Everything you turn on, every iPhone, every, everything, every media source, boom, in your face, data. Information, constantly barraging, just coming to you all the time. When you have to step back every now and then and ask yourself, what's real? Obviously, our government's not, and I'm not. I'm not trying to be ugly, right? But have you have you seen? You just read the articles. They're more confused than we are. They're more confused than the third grade park, uh, schoolyard. I'm just telling you. Somebody dropped the candy. Nobody knows how to pick it up. The baseline of God. If we accept the baseline or the base Christian truths is really what I'm saying. The base Christian truths of God. Then why are we so upset or in disbelief or troubled by? The, what the world is doing. I'm pulling you. I want to. I'm pulling you. Because, see, I want you to ask yourself this question. Why do we get so worked up about what's going on around us if we're going to stay on the baseline of God? Because as long as we accept Christ and his truth, we will always we be headed in direct what? Opposite. We're going to be opposites. And here's the good news. We should be. Right? See, we should be. See, what's wrong with Butch? There's something wrong with him. And I've said this before. Not just about Butch, but Tony too. Right? We should be different. And be different in what? In God himself. In the baselines of God. See, that's a, is the world troubling as we think it is? Is it as much trouble as it appears to be? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. Oh, yeah. It ain't no doubt, folks. What you're seeing is real. What you're seeing is real. And, and, and how do we know? Well, this, Joe, this is where we come into the fact. And Bernie and all of us and all of us guys and all of us ladies, this is where we come into it. Well, let me tell you what my opinion is, right? Because we all got one, right? We watch stuff. We pull it in. We filter it. Then when somebody says, hey, what do you think about the world? Boom, let me tell you what I think. Hmm? From my experience, how we grew up. What was it? What, how we, and everyone in this room, you grew up a little bit different, a little, little, little different in your family, a little different environment, a little bit. Some of you from different places, different parts of the country. Hmm. different experiences and that influences how we look at the world and how we think about it we, we use words like well that's not the way we were raised anybody said that lately <laughs> when watching TV or seeing some kids playing or well that's not the way I was raised and there's not one of you over like 35 well I'm going to go a little further I'm going to go 45 and say that every one of you every time you see a kid act up well, well I would have got my rear end tore for that I mean all of us don't have any rear ends because we've all been beat to death every one of us just admit it Hmm? That, that's what I'm saying. It's all good. It's all good. This is the, that's not the way we grew up. That's not the America I once knew. And I'm just telling you, daily changing click of the clock, America's changing moment by moment by moment because here's the deal, folks. It's of the world. It's influenced by the world. My question is to you tonight, why do we let it disturb us so much? 
Why do we let it disturb us? Because if we compare the world to the word of God, then it removes any doubt or any argument whatsoever. It's no longer of an opinion, but fact, that the fact of the facts of life reside with a sovereign God. He laid down a baseline, a, base, a, a firm baseline, and again, hasn't changed since its origin. If we could only know its origin, right? We know the book. We can follow the translation through, through, uh, through uh, 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 England and how it was printed into English. And we can follow the translation of the Bible. But knowing God before all times, the Alpha and the Omega. So we can't, we, it's one of those scratch your head kind of deals, right, Bernie? Because what is infinity? Huh? <laughs> More than I know. It's, it's dot zero, 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 It's like my paycheck, dot zero, 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 right? And you go try to buy something with dot zero zero so. See, it's 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 it, it's it's it, 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 it. Well, let me let me rephrase here. To the comments that the world is changing, morals are changing, people are changing. It's factual. Tolerance goes down every day, right? Well, I should say tolerance increases every day. Mm -hmm. That's right. Because really, we tolerate more and yeah. more and more and more. <laughs> And more it softens but we tolerate more but to override the fact that God has not changed see that's the issue God has not changed it's that you say Tim what's trust we've been talking about trust and we've talked about faith what is that what is it it's believing that whatever I'm standing on God and God has not will not ever ever change I may drift, I may fall, but I will always come back to the fact that I can go to the Bible and I can read it and know. Well, here's an example, Genesis chapter 1. And y'all know how much I love my Genesis chapter 1. But in the beginning, God created the earth and the moon and the stars and the heavens and the waters. He created the grass and the fields and the herbs and the plant life. He created the animals, both great and small, even the little creepy ones. Spiders, lizards. Mm, hate lizards. They're fast. Yeah, but they're there and then they're over there. Snakes are coming in. Spiders. He created he, life, fish, tur uh, 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 the life of the fish, the turtles, the frogs, and the whales. He created. Now, when, when we read and hear that man has decided differently to how the world evolved. <coughs> Let me back up because I kind of ran that all together and I didn't mean to. God said in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God created the fish and the seas and the grass, right? And that's what we say as people. This is what, this is what I'm standing on. I believe that's what God did. Then why? Then why when we hear, well, we believe that the world, we, the world evolved from uh, this way. Here's what I want you to think about. Why do we let it disturb us? Because hmm? we know it's not true. Well, that's one way of looking at it. The other way is sometimes though we let it influence our thought process, though, because we begin to think about what? Is there a possibility that God's word's not true? I'm just asking. Why do we let it disturb us? Let me ask you again. Do you believe that God created the heavens and the earth? Absolutely. Your choice. Your question. It's just, right? That's the question. But, that, but that's what God put. Do you believe that God created? And then if you do believe the Bible is true, then why do we let so much of this chatter disturb us? Uh -uh. No. I told you I was pulling for you. I'm still pulling you. I've got a spider trap set for you. And I knew this one would be too good for you, Bernie. I knew so. <laughs> do you believe? Let me look. Do you believe that God created a man and a woman? Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. yes, I do. Your choice. It's your choice. That's so good. It's your choice. Then why, when we hear about what what has been added, and I and, and uh, uh, I don't know all the acronym, but the, like the LBGQ2 thing, when we when there's been another letter added in inclusion to that list, why do we let it disturb us? Well, it speaks to all the, 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 the relationships outside of a man and woman, basically, right? It speaks to all the uh, sexual relationships outside of a man and a woman. That's, the, uh, that's not the acronym. That's just the letters that are used. But my point to it is not to get off on that as much as the question, why do we let it disturb us? If, again, going back to the question, do you believe God created a man and woman? If he created a man and a woman, and if we believe that he created the heavens, the earth, the animals, and the insects, and, and men and women, if we believe all this stuff, and we believe that God placed man as a husband and the woman as a helpmate, and God ordained the parents over the home and the children to honor them, and if we believe that he gave us the Ten Commandments on how to morally and spiritually live our lives in the Bible, and as well as two main commandments found within the several scriptures in the Bible, several different places, and those two scriptures 
or those two statements, those commandments, where uh, I'm using the example tonight in Mark 12, 28 through 31, but there's several places where he said, and we've been, we've been talking about this a lot lately, where he said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, right? And the second one is, and we've been struggling with that one for a couple of months now, right? Love your neighbor. Huh? We've been struggling with that since Adam and Eve was born. That's right. Love your neighbor as yourself. There's no command. So if we believe these statements within the Bible to be true, then again, why, why do we let the world around us disturb us when we see what they have is not what God said? Now let me ask you another way. Why have we allowed the world to take us out of God's way? There's another way to say this, too. It's a, it's a, it's a football analogy. You know, we, why do we let them take us off our game? Right? Why do we let them take us out of our game? Why have we allowed the world to influence the way we live? That's why I didn't want you to jump in, Bernie, because I'm pulling you to the spider wheel. How will we ever find a peace? And here's where I'm really trying to drive home. How will you ever find peace in your life if we worry about what the world says or change, uh, or if we change to look like them, act like them, or live like them? See, we say we want peace of God. We want to, I'm going to stand on the peace of God. But if we're going to let the world influence our lives, which we have. Amen. Come on. Yep. Every one of us, including me, we've all been influenced by the way we dress, the way we look, the way we talk sometimes, what we watch, what we allow, what we'll tolerate. Yep. Huh? How do we find peace? Because, see, between God and the world, it will always be polar opposite. And we will always be, if you're going to be in alignment with God, you're going to be in conflict, if I may, with the world. But it doesn't have to be one of battle as much as to realize that, wait, this stuff, and that's what I'm trying, I hope I'm getting across, this stuff that's coming at me, this stuff that I'm being pushed, this stuff that's pushing me, I'm going to stop and I'm going to stand still because I'm not going to be pushed anymore by the world. I'm going to stand in my God because in my God is truth and in my truth is peace and I know who I am in God. That's why I said tonight when we opened up, it's your choice on how you're going to live your life. And we've used that so many ways. Well, should I be this or should I be that? Should I get this job? Should I marry this person? Should I live this way? Should I live that way? The question is, how are you going to live in God or not? Because before you answer anything else, Deb, the only question that has any value to it is, am I going to live in God? And if I am, I'm going to stand right there. See, peace comes from trust, and trust develops in faith, right? Y'all go, go with that? Peace comes from trust, and trust develops in faith. Then Romans 10, 17, says, it states that faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. What are you hearing? What are you listening to? Huh? Therefore, if we believe in the word of God and we have faith and therefore trust in it, then why do we care what the world is doing? Amen. So I'm trying to pull you out tonight. I'm trying to pull you back away from where we, we often set ourselves. We sit in the middle of it and we think, man, we're all caught up in this world. No, you're not. Nope. That's why I said tonight, if you're tired of it, step out of it and leave it. Let it go. I've got to have a job. Yes, you've got to have a job. Yes, you have to have a place to eat. Yes, we have to deal with insurance and all the things that come with it and all that. But at the fact of life, what I'm saying is the mental preparation of statement that I'm going to live by the word of God. I'm done, right? I, I don't want what the world, and even more concerning, why have we let the world influence instead of us influencing the world? Amen. Somehow we got lost. I'm, a, I'm, not, I'm not standing up here. See, I, somebody has I can always talk and speak and preach if you want to call it tonight, whatever we're doing, teaching, sharing, whatever, because I'm right in there with you. I know what I crawled out of. I know where I've been. And I know what God saved me from. That's why I'm no higher, no lower. It's just a fact of life. We've allowed the world to influence us more than we've done our job. And our job was what? Influence the world. Influence the world. And then, because I'm about to ask you deliberately, here's the baited question. No. <laughs> if, you're, if, you're, if you're going to argue that you agree and have faith with God and his word, that you understand the world is the world, right? The world is the world. Then let me ask all of us this question. Why do we spend more time watching, listening, reading, and discussing the world events than we do the word of God? Amen. Amen. 
spider to the flies. Don't, and don't, oh, really? Why do we act, look, conduct our lives, including our homes, more on the standards of the world? Come on, convicting. I'm, I, yeah, I'm just, I'm trying to stir all of us. Why do we, why are we living more like the world than the Bible? Well, that's old fashioned. <laughs> well, no, being good to one another is not old fashioned. No. Having some morals for one another, caring for one another, loving one another. That's not old fashioned. That's supposed to be what people we, we're all oh man, I feel so isolated. Some we had that conversation last night. I think that's Chris's topic mm -hmm. last night. Was you know, do, do, he talks to a lot of the guys he works with, the younger guys, and they, man, I'm isolated, I'm alone, I don't feel like I'm connected to anything. Think about it. If you're not involved after you graduate high school or or if you go to college or something and you get a job, what else and you have let's just say you're single, other than your friends that you may or may not have real friends, what are you really associated with? work. And many times that does what, Joe? We've been there, right? It identifies who I am. And people, men especially, I think, well, I think all of us, we struggle with the fact of our identification after a period of years because I'm a mother, right? I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I was a worker. This is my job. This is my career. And when it's over, I've talked to men who've retired and man, they're lost. Why? They don't know what to do with themselves anymore. Why? Because their whole world wrapped around what? God? No, no. What did it wrap around? Their employment. And if I could use you for example, you were a biker, right? I'm not picking. Yes, you were a biker. So you could say, you, you know, like you've been a biker your, your whole life. So you could identify with the fact, I'm a biker, right? Yes. We talked about that the other night. The rules, of, I was reading a deal about the hell angels this week, how all the rules that they have about being a hell's angel and how they, right? So there's men that live their whole lives around being a, a cowboy, a rodeo guy. A biker, a bass fisherman, right, guy? We, we identify. And then suddenly, hey, guess what? I can't fish anymore or I'm retired. Then what happens to us? See, we identify with what? We identify with stuff that wasn't substance because substance says I identify as a Christian. And as a Christian, I never lose my identification. Amen. Amen. See the beautiful part of God? I never lose who I am because I'm God first, me, and then I'm whatever else I am. Not, I'm this, and then, and then, because that way, I'm always upset down. Because my world is never factual, and my world is never based, because I'm always trying to identify with something that is always changing and evolving. When God said, I'm the baseline. Amen. I'm the baseline of Christ. It, it's, it's, it's what to say. And, I'm, and there, here's the way, here's the, here's, why do we look again and act and conduct ourselves and our standards in the world? Which, and let me ask you a question. Don't answer it. <laughs> Answer it inside quietly. I'm not, but because I'm not, I'm trying to get you to think about it. I'm not trying to convict you or, or, or condemn you. But let me ask you: Is your Bible app on more in your home or your television? Then what's influencing your home more? Hmm? See, I'm not that smart, right? Matter of fact, the stupider I am, the better it is because then God can ask me these questions, right? And I'm not like too smart to overthink them. See, that's my whole point tonight. Where you live in your life. Man, I have all these troubles. I have all, man, I'm so, I'm bound up. I'm, 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 I'm worried. I'm, 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 well, where, where, what are you worried about? Do you believe God? Do you believe? Do you, John 14, 1, 4. Let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions, many rooms. If we were not so, I would have told you, I would, and I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go... This is a fact he's saying, and if I go, I mean, because because here's the beautiful part, Butch, God can't, God doesn't lie. How do we know that? Baseline of truth hadn't changed in since we've known him, four thousand years, whatever it is, right? So he says, and if I go and prepare you a place, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Do you believe in God? Huh? Because when all this is like, oh, man, I don't know what to do with all this, right, Kathy? You've been there before. I don't know what to do with all this life that's going on. Man, I've I got all these things going on in my life. The world is coming at me saying, boom, mm. I believe in God. I'm going to take a deep breath. See, you can't find peace if you're always looking at all the chaos around you. Man, look at my life. Look at this. Is, this is upside down and backwards. Where's my peace? My peace in the fact is that I'm holding on, or more importantly, I'm standing on the word of God. And it's not, it's not, a, 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 it's a literal transaction, transit, uh, trans, it's a literal statement. I'm Amen. standing on the word of God. Amen.
But in order to stand on that, I've got to allow it to influence me more than the world. Right? I mean, why do we allow ourselves to be troubled if we believe this book to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Man, I believe the Word of God. Then live it. Live it. Do you believe Christ went to the cross? Do you believe that Christ went to the cross? He was buried, defeated, death, and is alive today? Because that's Romans 10, 8, 9, and 10, right? And if you believe and you've confessed, do you believe as in John 14 that he's preparing a place for us to go to? Do you believe it? See, is it factual for you? Not just a, not just a, a remnant or, or, or some, some uh, poetic uh, justice that someday, well, maybe I'll, I don't know, I don't know what to do with him. Like, you know, you ever had a cat? You ever seen a cat when he gets on a cushion and starts, you know, I don't know what that's all about, but he can't quite get comfortable. I know it's broke, but just stay with me. But, right, it's, you know, he just, he's just kneading and kneading. He's, his, his little claws are just, it's kind of like we are. We just, mm, I, I can't get comfortable, right? I want to get comfortable, but I can't because here's the deal. I won't let go and believe, put my faith in God. I know y'all weren't expecting this for Wednesday night, but, you know, pop goes the weasel. Here we go. It's just what it is. I want, to, I want you to think about who you are in God and how. If you say, I want peace, Tim. I want peace. Well, then you're going to have to push some world out. Right. You're going to have to shut some doors. You're going to have to make a decision on how do you want to live your life. Yes. It's, it's not about wealth, education, position, title. Matter of fact, if you read, those with the weakest faith and the poorest condition were the greatest ones for God. <coughs> Why? Because they're like me. They ain't very smart. He don't need smart. He needs willing That's right. to influence to what? The whole purpose. We can stand around all day long and talk about, and, and this is part of it. We can sit around and talk about this all night. We can debate this. We can have great conversations. But here's the question. What difference does it make? He already told us how to live our lives. See, there's no debate. The only debate is, will I trust him? And if I'm going to trust him, then I've got to believe in him i got to hurry now. I'm always out of time. Let me ask you, why again do we let the world disturb us then? As Christians, Matthew 6, 24, if you're there tonight, and, and 24 it says, No one can serve two masters, for either one will hate the one and love the other, or else one will be loyal to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. See, we cannot become entangled with the comings and goings of the world. And I know how this, this passage of Scripture has been used many times, and it can be used many times about, you know, man in the world, man in the church. But the bottom line is it's about a person either in God or out of God. In God or out of God. We, 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 we preachers, we can manipulate this verse really good, can't we, Butch? We can use it for a variety of different convictions. But tonight what I'm trying to get you to think about is how do we look at the fact that you can be in God or in the world, but if you're straddling the middle, remember what he told us? If you're lukewarm standing in the middle, you won't get there. Right? That's no stance. He'd much rather have you just say, I'm going to be over here. I'm just going to be, just go be bad. Did the pastor really tell me that? Well, if you're not going to be good, there's not really a happy medium. There's no such definition of just, I'm a good Christian. You're either a Christian or you're not a Christian. You're either believing or you're not believing. You can't stand in the middle and say, I'm both. It doesn't work that way. No. Right. For the fact of the matter is not condemnation, but for who you are in God. <laughs> See, the purpose of our lives was not to sit around and debate on what's wrong with the world, but to influence the world positively <clears throat> so that they would say, God, wow, I want what that is. What is that? What is that peace that that person has? So if we're going to let everything, and sometimes it's raining. I mean, I've been with some of y'all. Bill, your testimony now, it's raining right now, isn't it? I mean, it's booming. And some of you in other different places, I mean, it pours, don't it? Right? Melissa, you've been, I'm, I'm picking, please, just an example. It rains sometimes, don't it? Huh? It can pour, and you're like, man, I don't know. That's when you have to take that extra step to say, I'm going to hold on. That's right. Because you're getting pelted by the Satan. You're getting pelted by the world. And the world says, hey, this feels so much better. Why don't you just lay down and quit? Yeah. Don't it, Butch? Yeah, but. If you'll just lay down, I'll leave you alone. <laughs> I'll, I will. If you'll just quit, I'll, I'll, I'll get. Just, isn't that what he tells us? I'll give you what you want. It's so good. till you get it. <laughs> then you find out it's worse. Because <laughs> for us that have been down that road, we know how that road goes, don't we? That's the question. Why? Why? See, again, we can sit around and just talk and talk and talk. Listen, I'm going to have to hurry real quick. Listen, 
Verse 25. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life. Wow, how's that possible? Well, because I'm going to believe in God. Is it hard? That may be the single hardest thing that we deal with as a Christian. To not, to, to, and, I, and I say this all the time, pray, I'm going to put this in God's hand, and I'm going to leave it there. Mm. That's worse than chocolate cake on the counter at 2 a.m. I'm just saying, that's bluebell in the freezer, right? It is. Be human, be real, but be honest with God and tell him, hey, this, this, this is a struggle for me. I'm struggling to leave this with you. I don't want to, I want to fix it, but I'm not going, I'm going to leave it with God this time because I believe that he has a plan that hasn't changed. Amen. It's real. Amen. He said, don't worry, but what will you eat or what you'll drink nor about your body you'll put on is, is not life more than food and the body more than clothing. My spiritual salvation. That's what he's talking about. Look at verse 6. Look, 26. Look at the birds of the air. For they neither seek, sow, nor reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? How much that he loves you. Remember the song? Jesus loves you. Beyond our comprehension. Verse 27. Which of you, uh, by worrying, can add a cubic to his stature? Revis is not in here to pick on, so we'll have to move on. <laughs> So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spare. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now, if, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, he will, not, will he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, do not, do not worry, saying, what shall I eat? What shall we drink or what shall we wear? After all these things that the Gentiles seek, for the Heavenly Father knows that you need all of these things. But seek you first, seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Why do we struggle in ourselves to not be involved in the world? Didn't say you have to go to work. I'm talking about when we're really being influenced. What? By all this, what's the stock market going to do? What's the government going to do? You say, just sit home blindly, Tim? No, but I am telling you that if you turn some of that off and turn some more of this on, you might find some peace. Because mm -hmm. whatever keeps saying, well, if we just had peace in the world. Well, guess what? We can't have peace in the world until we put the peacemaker back on top of the table. Amen. Right? Amen. It won't work. Amen. So in this final part, he said, but seek you first the kingdom of God. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be worry. Excuse me. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. If you go to Job, it says, man and born a woman is few days and full of trouble. Amen. <laughs> See, Job 15, 13, 15 said, I will trust him, though he slay me. <laughs> I used this a couple of weeks ago, and it's, it's my verse, but it's the one that I keep coming back to because here's what he's asking you. Do you believe in me? All 236,000% of it because, again, if you're going to get bombarded we're in the world, but the question is, why? Because only you have the choice to turn it off or to allow it, Right? That's the power that we have. Do you believe that when we compare the world to the word of God, it removes any doubt or any argument to the reality of truth, which exposes, exposes how messed up this world is? Yeah. Paul told us without the light, without the truth, I would have never known I was lost. See, that's the conviction of the word of God. It's a clarifier. That's why Christ came to the world, to try to say, hey, guess what? You're messed up <laughs> in a polite way. But that's really what, it, and that's what the word of God is, in a polite way. You're me here, and why are you messed up? Because I gave you the Ten Commandments. I gave you the, the commandments of to, 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 tr to honor and love and trust me and to love your neighbor. And how do we live? I didn't have time to list tonight if you detailed all the differences. And if we just took the base scriptures uh, in the beginning and those commandments and just look at all of the laws that man has written. Just think about the one on murder, right? And I'm sorry to be uh, 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 direct with this one, but it said, do not murder, right? Do not kill each other. And if you do, it was what? An eye for an eye. What have we got? 47,000 reasons why you shouldn't pay the price for your choice, right? That's... And what do we have in our world today? <laughs> murder of the Lord. No penalty, right? Mm -hmm. And if we do, I was reading the other day, we're building more, uh, what do they call them? Um, I forget the word. Huh? 
Yeah, but they use the word uh, super penitentiaries or something. They're planning for the future to, to ha anyway, don't want to go down that road. You understand the point I'm trying to make, right? If we put ourselves, it's no longer of opinion, but a fact when you finally accept the fact. This is why when somebody comes to you and says, well, what do you feel about evolution? I think God created, I believe God created the heavens and the earth, yeah. right? Say, so, well, that's ignorant. Well, it may be to you, but that's what I believe. Why? Because this has never changed. And guess what? Every time we learn something new, guess what? Hey, guess what? we got a different opinion. <laughs> Green beans will cause cancer if you feed it to rats for the whole meal for the 37 years. They'll get cancer. <laughs> and next month, if you feed them corn forever, they'll get cancer from corn. Anyway, you get my... But see, because it's the fact of a sovereign God. It's the fact. Thus, the reason He came, the reason the Holy Spirit came, and the reason the manual was written was to show us how, 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 uh, how we can see correction and how to live our lives. Therefore, to the comments of the world changing, morals changing, people changing, it's very factual. You can say, yes, ma'am, that's true. You're right. The world is sliding closer and closer to the end of time. I firmly believe every day, right? Right? But the question to override the fact, how about really accepting the fact that God has not changed? Amen. See, really what I wanted you to leave here with tonight, if I could say anything, is that you can't get to peace if you're not going to stand on some foundation because everything that influences you is going to push you and if it's going to push you into terror or fear or concern continually then you can't have peace so the question as I asked tonight it's your choice how you're going to live your life you say Tim I got all this chaos I got all I got I, I, I totally understand but the question is where are you going to stand in your life with God and know that you're a child of God. To know that his words are real and that someday, someday, thank God, I'm going to go home to him. Mm -hmm. To my mansion, to my room, whatever it is, my, my cardboard refrigerator box. If I get that on Main Street, I don't care. Right? Amen. <laughs> whatever it is. But the thing I do know is that I'm going to hold tight because I know I'm going. Amen? Amen. Amen. Job 13, 15, though he slay me, I will trust him. Amen. Right? Put your faith in God, folks. And really think about this. I mean, this is for me. This is for all of us. Think about how we allow the world to keep influencing us. And, and, you know, and you may have to make some hard decisions about, man, I'm going to have to cut this off. I'm going to have to cut this relationship or cut this, this, this influence off so that I can live in my God, right? And, I, and I'm talking about electronics and, and just, like I said, what influences you? Because you need to stand firm in God so that we can be the influence back to God back to the world, right? Because that's really where we're supposed to be. Anyway, ran over a little bit as always. Sunday, we're a 15-minute sermon. Uh, yeah. Damn. <laughs> I don't want a 15-minute sermon. <laughs> I almost looked up and said, well, I want to try. How about that? Anyway. Hey, here's some, uh, something really, it really is nice. If you haven't, uh, maybe not tonight, but if you get a chance, walk out into the new building. Uh, I think some folks, it kind of it kind of got, you know, it was a big in proportion. And then when the slab got poured, I heard, oh, it's kind of small. Go out there and walk around for a few minutes. It's going to be a really nice building, folks. Oh, you know, we're a long ways away. Uh, the good news is we'll make the payment on the building this week. The doors are coming in. It'll be dried in. And that's all paid for. And we got a little bit of money left over. So we'll be looking at AC, I guess, and electrical and trying to move forward. But uh, it's paid for. Nobody's Amen. in debt, right? Right. And it really will be a nice facility when it's over with. So, it, and what I'm trying to say, you should be very proud. I mean, but if you haven't, just go out there and, and sing. Go out there and sing in it right now. I don't know what's going to sound like. Right now. Yeah, it's kind of dark right now. But if you get a chance, go out there and sing a hymn in it. It's, it was, it's, it's really quite impressive. And, and here's the deal. You're doing it through the power of God. Amen. 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 Don't remember where that's going from, right? God has put us on a beautiful spot here. To, to be a ministry to this to this community. Amen? Amen. Anyway, thank you young people for being here. Thank y'all for being here tonight. Good to see y'all again. And you know you should be here, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> Love you. Anyway, God bless y'all. Uh, y'all pray for Bill. Mm. Butch dismisses, would you please, sir? Dear Lord, we thank you, Lord, for